as you see here, we got our old stacks, our clutches that go in the rear of the case, and this bad drum from where the snap ring went out or broke and damaged this drum. We got ourselves a new 2-4 drum here. We'll replace that. And we got new snap rings for it as well. So we need to start with this clutch hub, this pinion, and it has a needle roller on it. Feels good. You can take it off if you wish. Just remember how it goes. You can feel it. Feels good. Feels smooth. You do not have to replace it. Put our little pinion in this back planetary. It only goes one way. And you can kind of see how some of this works. How planetaries work. Pretty nifty how they do it. Now, I got the low reverse clutch hub that will go in next. It goes inside the 2-4 clutch hub. It's got a needle thrust roller on it too. It feels good. And in front of it has a needle thrust plate too. So now we're going to put in our low reverse clutch hub into the rear of the case. We've got good planetaries, everything's fine. And we're going to put it into the back of the case. With a little twist and turn and boop, it's right in there. As you see, it's, a, it's another planetary. It gives you an idea of how they work. It'll free you all one way. You can, they can do all kinds of things. Now, for low reverse and 2-4 clutch packs, there's two different sizes of steels. These are pretty thick. They will go with low reverse in the back of the case. Now for the 2-4 clutch, the steels are much thinner. Pretty big difference. And that's due to the fact that the 2-4 clutches have more frictions and will need more and are thinner and will need more steels to add up to make clearance. Low reverse, there's fewer frictions, need more steels to take up the clearance. So now we're going to put in our friction disc and steels for the low reverse. There are one, two, three, four, five frictions. One, two, three, four, five steels. And since there's a piston in the rear of the case, got to start with a steel. Acts like a rear pl pressure plate. Now these have different sections that will match the case. This little somewhat wide section here will go in this part of the case. They can only fit one way, pretty much. And you gotta kinda work with them a little bit. There's a steel. Now we're gonna do a friction. And the friction will spline over the low reverse clutch hub. It can take a little bit of finagling to get them. But they will go and slide on. <clears throat> Next we'll do a steel. And these are all brand new. Friction. Steel. Sure, they're all the way back. Wow. 
cast steel. So before we put our last low reverse friction in, we got another snap ring. We got a snap ring to install first, and we just want to leave this friction out so we don't scratch it or the steel. It's a little thin snap ring. It's thin enough, and when it goes in the groove, it's not going to be very visible, and it keeps from rubbing on these frictions. in itself to get in. There's two grooves. And you got to make sure you get it in the back or the farthest groove. And you see it snapped in. It's thinner. It doesn't poke out any from the case. And that's a good reason. So it does not scratch this friction. last friction. Now we can put in, put on our low reverse pressure plate. This plate is 6.26 .6 millimeter. And this plate is 5.9 5.94 millimeter. So we're going to try this plate. Now you have the low reverse pressure plate or reaction plate. This plate's going to be used to hold the low reverse clutches and the two four clutches. Now with this particular pressure plate, it's got a step side on the bottom and it has a slightly beveled top side. On this one, you have to face the flat side towards the bell housing. We're going to put in our big snap ring, the one that was destroyed. It's got a new one, of course. And it's a big, thick snap ring. snap rings in there we can install our uh, two four clutches and it's up now this is the two four clutch hub and this is the hub that got damaged whenever the snap ring blew up we got ourselves a brand new one it's already got new bushings stamped in it so no need to worry about those and it's just good looking. It will last a long time. A grease on the bushings. Now this pinion here for this planetary it splines into, it rides on this needle bearing in the low reverse clutch hub planetary set up down there in the back. So nothing goes behind on the outside. These little holes or for the next thrust washer set up. And everything looks good. Spine it up on there. It feels right. It's gonna be wobbly, it's not supported yet. Doesn't look like it's rubbing against anything. Feels good. Now we have to start with a friction on two four because the low reverse reaction plate also uses is also used for the two four apply. It's a dual action setup. Everything's shared, and that thin snap ring that hides away in the case does not rub them clutches. It's designed to do that. 
put a steel in there. Remember, they only go one way. Steel. Oops. A little friction next. Now we're going to end with a steel on this one. The reason being is because the 2 4 piston will push against this steel in the setup. Use your 2 4 hub, it's engaged. The piston will push against this steel and lock or break this clutch. It can't turn it, turning, not turned. Piston pushes against this side. So you got two pistons that pretty well push against each other, and that's that's the reason why it has some two snapper rings on either side of the low reverse reaction plate. It's used for two different clutches. This is the 2-4 piston assembly. This is what will push on this clutch back, the 2-4 that we just installed. And you see it's got one of them Bellevue springs again. It's, uh, looks like that, and it's springy. When the piston comes out of its bore here, it will push against this Bellevue spring and fold it up. You can't do it by hand, but it will fold the tabs up that way and it will return like this, pushing the piston back in its bore. Here's the Bellevue spring. The tabs facing out are going to face towards the bell housing. And it just sets right on top of the 2-4 steel in there. It will spring in and it will push against that. That's 2-4 piston. We're going to pull it out of its case and make sure it's okay. And this is another bonded rubber piston, so we don't have to reseal any of it. We just want to check and make sure it's okay. It's soft, it's pliable. Okay, it's not soft and not pliable. It's got a big hole in it. Now while checking this piston, it feels good and everything, but it's got a massive cut in it. That will leak a lot of hydraulic pressure and most likely cause a burn up. This could have been caused by when the piston was out and it had the snap ring running around in it and it cut it or it come back in its bore or extended too far out when the snap ring blew back there making our clearances uh, way looser so the piston overextended probably came out of its bore and cut itself on its own cover. So we'll have to replace this so we're going to have to hold off here and get ourselves a new bonded rubber piston. So we got ourselves a new 2-4 piston. It's bonded rubber. It's all one piece. And when we opened this piston up and it's, took it out of its housing, we found a big old tear. Well, that's bad news. Because it'll leak pretty bad. And we'd have trouble with the transmission. So we got our new one here. You can see the difference put it in its housing and be very careful not to tear it and that one went in there now we got this oil fly hole here this faces up this is a slot this piston housing will go into. There's the apply hole. The valve body actually sits on top of this and when it's appropriate it will feed this hole and apply this clutch. We've got our Bellevue spring which is in there. Now sometimes it'll line up. Other times it may not. So you can kind of set the Bellevue spring into the tabs of the piston and try to very gently set it in there without it falling out of the piston. It's probably going to fall out. Or you can hold it, get through the slot up here. And kind of keep it 
and it's not and in theory the rest fall back in now we got a snappery that retains this 2-4 piston we've taken our transmission here and we've set it with a bell housing facing up so we can put a little bit more pressure on this snapper ring which has the bell view spring behind the piston pushing on it and making it a little difficult to get the snapper ring in. Now we couldn't set this flat because the output shaft sticks out of the case underneath here just a little bit so a couple milk crates works quite well for supporting most transmissions. Some are a little awkward. This one's just right. And we got to put some pressure on this Bellevue spring with this 2-4 clutch piston. A little trick for this. Get your pry bar in and get it to the edge of the piston. And get a good strong place that has support in the casting like right here or even in this area. You don't want to go in between something or you may break it. <clears throat> We're going to pull. Work your snap ring down. Once you get part of it started, the rest will go in pretty easy. So by doing it this way, you can get this snapper ring in. And putting leverage on the piston and pushing that Bellevue spring down to get your snapper ring in there. Snapper ring's in all the way. We'll double check. Put a little bit of pressure on it and see it's going in the groove a little bit more. Double check everything as you go through. We're going to put our 2 4 clutch hub back in. Once, once again, the splines on the, uh, the disc probably won't line up at first, but they will. Just turn it and feel them lock in. And this one is fully locked in and now's a good time to air test your 2-4 clutch this one's easy to do because it's a pie hole is right there it's not going to be the easiest to keep steady air pressure on it but you can give it a couple shots the old housing moving next we're ready for the input drum assembly we're going to leave it like this so we can drop the whole thing down on there. 